Hey everyone, the last subject we have to cover is how do you add fractions or subtract fractions that have a different denominator. Now we've already covered that any fraction is just another way of writing division and that any division is just multiplying by one over the number you thought you were dividing by. In effect, then every division is just multiplication. Uh, so if you haven't covered that yet, along with the videos on multiplication and division of fractions, then, then cover that first. So adding or subtracting numbers with a different denominator, how do we do that? Well, if it's the same denominator, it's easy. We just add the top, keep the bottom the same. With a different denominator, we want to make the denominator the same. And here's how we do that. See, you can multiply anything by 1. Because multiplying anything by 1 doesn't change it. And you can write a 1 in a different way, right? You could write it as a stick, or you could write it with a little base and a nose like this. Or you could write 1 like this. 7 over 7. That's also a way of writing 1, because 7 divided by 7 is 1. You could also write 1 like this. 4 over 4. That's also 1, because 4 divided by 4 is 1. Now watch what happens. I'm multiplying these two terms, the fractions in these two terms. So you multiply the tops, 3 times 7, 21. You multiply the bottom, 4 times 7, 28. Plus, multiply the top, 2 times 4 is 8. Multiply the bottom, 7 times 4, 28. Look at that, we have the same denominator. 28. And 28. Now we can just add. 21 plus 8 is 29. The denominator stays the same. So, how did I get the same denominator there? Well, I multiplied this by 7 over 7 because the opposite denominator is 7. And I multiplied this by 4 over 4 because the opposite denominator is 4. As a result, I get a 7 times 4 and a 7 times 4 in both terms, and that gives me my common denominator. General rule there, a over b plus c over d. The general rule there is you multiply each fraction by 1 where that 1 is of the form of the opposite denominator divided by itself. Like here, the D comes from the opposite denominator, and the B here comes from the opposite denominator. As a result, you have a common denominator. In our case, DB. And then you just add or subtract fractions normally. In this example, we're doing adding, but it works the exact same way for subtraction. Adding or subtracting. Okay. As another example, let's do 7 over 10 minus 3 over 4. So that first fraction we multiply it by 4 over 4, and that section fraction, we multiply it by 10 over 10. We multiply the tops, we get 28, multiply the bottoms, 40, minus multiply the tops, 30, and multiply the bottoms, 40. Now we have a common denominator. So 28 minus 30 is negative 2, divided by 40. Done. Now you might think, oh, well, we can actually reduce that. We can reduce that to a negative 1 over, over uh, 20. And you're right. That is a negative 1 over 20. Now, how did you get that? And you might say, oh, well, I know that I can, uh, I can divide the top and the bottom by the same thing. And that's right. That's true. Now why is it that you can divide the top and the bottom by the same thing? 
Well, look what we're doing here. We're multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing because we're multiplying by a special form of one. Dividing the top and the bottom by the same thing is the same process because remember, all division is just multiplying by one over the thing that you're dividing by. Negative two times one over two divided by 40 times one over two. It's just dividing top and bottom by the same thing, negative 1 over 20. So sometimes it's easy to see how to reduce something. Negative 2 over 40, that's kind of easy. Okay, but what if you have, say, 132 divided by 721? Or 23, there we go, that's more reducible. Well, that's kind of more difficult. How do you reduce that, right? Maybe you think, can you even reduce that? So it's generally easier to work with smaller numbers. And how do you do that? Well, I'll show you how to do that with our example right here. 7 tenths minus 3 quarters. 7 tenths minus 3 quarters. First thing we did, we multiplied by 4 fourths and 10 tenths to get a common denominator. But there's another more clever way you can do that. See that 10 is 5 times 2. And that 4 is 2 times 2. And to get a common denominator, well that first term, you just need to multiply it by 2 over 2. And that second term, you just need to multiply it by 5 over 5. That way you have 2 times 5 times 2 and 2 times 5 times 2 in the bottom for both terms. Dividing by 2's and 5's instead of 4's and 10's like we did before. And multiplying by 2's and 5's. So what we have is 14, 7 times 2, divided by 20, 5 times 2 times 2, minus 15, 3 times 5, divided by 20, 2 times 2 times 5, negative 1 over 20. We didn't even have to reduce, because we recognize that 10 is 2 times 5, and 4 is 2 times 2. They already have a 2 in common. We just need another 2 here, and another 5 here, and the denominators are the same. And you'll notice more of these tricks, the more you work with numbers, the more you'll notice that, oh, well, this number is actually you know, composed of these ones and so on. So that's one trick to avoid reducing later on. And now you know how to add and subtract numbers with different denominators. There's your general rule right there and a trick you can learn to do it faster. And I'll teach you one more trick. Well, what if you're multiplying, subtracting, adding numbers, uh, but one of them is a fraction and the other one isn't? Okay? One of them is a fraction and the other one isn't. Okay? Like three quarters minus two, or five sevenths times three or five divided by seven over nine. Okay, what if one of your numbers is a fraction and the other one isn't? No worries. Any number is a fraction, is just divided by one. Because any number divided by one is itself. So take your five over seven times three, for example. That's just five over seven times three over one. How about your five divided by seven over nine? 5 divided by 7 over 9, that's just 5 over 1 divided by 7 over 9. And with that second trick and what we talked about before, you can do any operation with any fraction you want. And the key is remembering that any fraction, A over B, it's just division. And any division, it's just the first number multiplied by 1 over the second number.